The most powerful bomb ever made is the Tsar bomb, built by the Soviet Union during the Cold War. It has a power of 50 megatons, 50 million tons of TNT. More than 3,000 times the bomb deployed on Hiroshima during the Second World War, the little boy. But what if I tell you that this Tsar bomb is a little kitten compared to what I'm gonna talk about today? Would you leave a like down here, down below? Well, let's talk about antimatter bomb. An antimatter bomb could potentially be the most powerful weapon ever made by humans. But what makes it so powerful? First, we need to understand what antimatter is. As the word says, antimatter. So, not so hard to understand. It's basically the opposite of a matter. So, if we take, for example, a proton, it has plus one charge, one half spin, and a mass of about 1.6 10 to minus 27 kilograms. An antiproton, so the antiparticle of proton, it has the same mass, the same spin, but opposite charge. So instead of being one, it's minus one in this case. When these two objects come across, they annihilate. So basically they disappear. But as we know in physics and in the universe, nothing really disappear. What's happened here is that when the proton and antiproton came across, they release energy, a big amount of energy, through photons, obviously. Maybe many of you already knew that. But did you ask why? Did you ask why the sadly dead of this particle that they were just wandering around the universe? Why no funeral? Why no one care about them? Okay, let's be serious. To understand deeply, we need to recall something very important in particle physics. The fact that a particle is also a wave. Yes, this seems weird, but it has been proven by many experiments, such as the double slit experiment. If you want a video about that, let me know in the comments down below. Especially, each particle has a waveform, which depends on the mass, on the spin, or the general characteristics of this particle. If we take, for example, two protons and we combine the waveform of them, what we will obtain is a bigger waveform, because it's the sum of them. But if we take a proton and antiproton and we combine the two waveform, the result is the difference of these two waveforms. So basically we obtain zero, mathematically. But what's happening for real is the release of the whole energy that was contained in these two particles. How we release these two energy? through the famous, the most famous equation in the world, E equal mc squared, the Einstein equation, which says that the mass can be converted into energy. So at this point, we know that when a particle and antiparticle come across, they release a lot of energy through this equation. So let's compare the energy released by little boy to this Antimatter bomb, little boy, has been filled by 64 kilograms of fissile material and the energy released was equal to 15 kilotons, 15,000 kilograms of TNT. To release the same amount of energy, an antimatter bomb would need less than a gram of matter and antimatter combined together. That's crazy. But if we take the same amount of fissile material that was in, in little boy, 64 kilograms, so 64 kilograms of antimatter, the energy released will be mental. 1400 megatons. 93,000 the power of little boy, or 28 times the Tsar bomb. Bam! That's so much energy. I hope no one will ever build such a weapon and it will not be possible soon because even if we know how to create antimatter in the lab it's so difficult and very expensive a gram of antimatter costs about 60 trillion dollars 60 trillion that's the conclusion guys i hope you enjoyed the video if so leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe if you want more physics a la cane babuino bye